Our world is in a tragic and bloody mess. And it isn't just bad luck. There's a force which drives people, you, me, politicians, and even whole nations in the wrong direction. Our world has tried to ignore it, but recent events have shown us we can't. We must take it seriously, and we must give it its true name. Evil. We can't look honestly at the world without recognizing that evil exists. Real, serious evil is going on all the time. But it doesn't have to be this way. There is a solution. And it offers us a startling but effective way of dealing with evil in the real world. Unbelievable? Well, you may be surprised. So what exactly is evil? And what do people like me mean when we talk about Jesus' death as some kind of victory over evil? It's my belief that in today's world we've been going about things in entirely the wrong way. We tried to pretend that evil didn't exist or that if it did it was just a little problem and we could deal with it quite easily. It's all part of the arrogance of modern life. This is a can-do society, we're told. Our politicians, media pundits and economists seem to believe that humankind is basically good, that the world is basically benign, and that there's nothing fundamentally wrong with it that we can't put right. We just need to try a little bit harder, improve things a bit, introduce more Western-style democracy to the world, and then all our difficulties will vanish. Even some Christians have spoken this way, that the great Victorian ideal of progress, with everything automatically getting better and better all the time, has infected a lot of our thinking and imagination. But if it were true, then we in the West, with our money and our technology and our education, would already be living in paradise. And we're not, are we? Wherever we live, we can see that people are mired in evil, held down by the social conditions they have to live in. Bad housing, crime, drugs and the rest. The fact that there are usually many causes for disaster alerts us to the hidden element that's operating, the force of evil. You see, if we believe in progress, in things automatically getting better all by themselves, then just as there's no room for God in that system, there's no room for acknowledging the force of evil either. This approach to life isn't just wrong, it's part of the problem. I grew up at a time when economic success, however elusive, became the be-all and end-all of political life. And so it remains. But could it be that money really is the root of all evil? We all know, don't we, that greed and acquisitiveness can never be completely satisfied, so they can only ultimately lead to unhappiness. And yet we have built our whole society on trying to satisfy the relentless quest for consumer goods. And that doesn't make sense, does it? When I was young, censorship was being dismantled left, right and centre. Censorship, we were told, was the only real obscenity. People were encouraged to express their sexuality rather than control it. But we forgot that evil works in that way too. We all know that sexual licentiousness produces massive unhappiness in families and in individual lives. But we live in the 21st century, don't we? And we don't want to say that adultery is wrong. So instead of condemning it as what it is, destruction and betrayal, we condone it. And then something happens so foul that it hits us in the face. On the 4th of August 2002, Two little girls, Holly Wells and Jessica Chapman, vanished from their homes in Soham in Cambridgeshire. Their bodies were found in a ditch two weeks later. They had been murdered 
by the caretaker of their school. In number one court today, no one was doubting that we were in the presence of evil and its name was Ian Huntley. We like to think of small English towns as pleasant, safe places. So we're shocked to the core when two little girls are murdered by someone they obviously knew and trusted. Today, we have no way of coping with evil of that kind. Yet newspaper editors love the word evil. It helps to sell copies, but it doesn't help us understand what it is or how we can deal with it. When the newspapers reach for the E word, it's normally just a label meaning really bad, as bad as it gets, things that we hate. And that means that the rest of us can simply stop thinking. We can go home and forget about it until the next time. And more particularly, it means that evil is somewhere else, not here. It's in other people, not people like us. And when we label someone as evil, that's when the really bad stuff begins. Demonising other people means we can do what we like with them. They don't matter. All bets come off. All restraints are removed. We become evil ourselves. A policeman came to me and he was holding this white sack and he put it over my head and tied it at the back. They took a bucket of cold water, they poured it over my head. And when that water was coming down, they began to apply the electric shock. All over my breasts, you know, you'll feel like your breast is flying all over the breast, the thighs, the hands, all over where they feel like putting the rods. And they ask me questions. Where is the ammunition? Back in the 1980s, Tandy Shazi was an active member of the African resistance against apartheid. To these policemen, that and the colour of her skin justified almost anything. They could do what they liked. I was taken up again the stairs to another room which was also very dark. After 20 or 30 minutes, four white policemen came in and they were laughing, talking. They brutally began to rape me, all four of them, gang raped me. Through the holes of the sack, you could see that these are white people. And they were talking in Afrikaans and they left me sitting there, shaking and angry. When people deny the humanity of others, they become evil themselves. Perhaps British people think they aren't capable of things like this, but they are. We all are, as recent events in Iraq have demonstrated. Even so, it's possible to break that link. It's time to go back to a more thoroughgoing approach to evil. It's somewhere between two and 4,000 years old. And it makes more sense of the facts on the ground. And what's more, it shows us a better way of doing something about them. It's called the Bible. Its solution seems to fly in the face of all the rules of modern life. But I'm going to show you how effective the biblical solution is.